When you're on the road in central Australia, it's rough, dusty and dry. There's no road service, no phones, not even a tap. So you have to come prepared and change your way of thinking. Not just for driving, even the way we think about science and technology has to change gear out here. This is Kintore, 500 kilometres west of Alice Springs. It's one of Australia's remotest communities and also one of the newest. Kintore is on the traditional land of the Pindaby people. During the 1950s, they were moved off their land. But 10 years ago, they moved back to re-establish a new community. Like many Aboriginal people, the Pintabi are in a state of transition, looking for ways to reconcile a traditional lifestyle with the realities of contemporary Australia. In theory, you might expect modern technology to provide some of the answers, but in practice, this hasn't been the case. Apart from a few successes like radios, most of the technology introduced here simply doesn't last. It's an expensive problem which communities like this can ill afford. But little has been done about it. The standard explanation has been to blame the people, to say that things fail out here because they're abused. Most people have left it at that. But a few scientists have started to look more closely at the problem. One of them is Dr Bruce Walker. The challenge to me is to look at a situation, to look at what people are doing, how they're using technology, and then say, well, why is it so? Not to sit there and, and say, they're not using it properly, I'll, I'll teach them how to use it properly. To ask, why is it that they're using it the way they are using it? That question of why led Bruce Walker on the path to appropriate technology, a philosophy that looks for the real functions technology should serve, without any assumptions. Some of his designs, like this washing machine, may seem humble in appearance, but in practice, it's proven far more successful than conventional high-tech designs. Out in the desert, a hand-powered machine makes a lot of sense. Many communities are without electricity. Not only that, Aboriginal people use a lot of blankets, which in potentially freezing places like Kintore are used as all-purpose covers and ground sheets. When you try and put those things through conventional washing machines, the plastic parts that work well in, in Melbourne and Sydney tend not to last very long in this sort of environment. And that's not a reflection at all on the people that use the machines, and it's not an abuse. It's the fact that the material selection in the first instance was inappropriate for a remote community and the type of lifestyle that's led in that community. Part of the philosophy of appropriate technology is that if a particular design is going to work within a community, someone there has to be able to fix it. For that reason, Bruce Walker's centre employs and trains Aboriginal people. Often, they're building items for their very own communities, like this chip heater, a modification of the gas cylinder. Out in the desert, the suitability of the chip heater is clear. Aboriginal people are expert fire builders. They don't waste fuel, burning just enough to heat what they need. So with chip heaters, they get hot showers whenever they like. They're even more appropriate than solar technology because out here, getting panels replaced is almost impossible. But it's not just remoteness that makes appropriate technology essential. Most of Australia's remote communities are Aboriginal communities. And according to Bruce Walker, the cultural differences can't be ignored. I think there are a lot of things that we assume about science and technology which are 
based in our culture, the very value of why we pursue certain things in, in, in the process of science and developing technologies is related to the sort of lifestyle that, that we as, as urban people would lead. And the majority of the technology which is developed relates to that urban lifestyle. And it doesn't translate terribly well to a remote situation. A classic example is the wheelchair. This one has been designed for two people because, as Bruce Walker learned, in Aboriginal communities, personal mobility is not the priority it is in the city. Being close to the ground suits the social needs of desert people, and hardy, puncture-proof tyres are essential. It's an appropriate mobility aid for the desert, so that's exactly what it's called, not a wheelchair. One of the things which hinders our work is to use terms like wheelchair, house, uh, washing machine. They all represent things that we think we know and uh, they suggest to us certain solutions which immediately cut out the other solutions. None of Bruce Walker's solutions are especially glamorous. They're technology in its no-frills form, nevertheless fulfilling fundamental needs like mobility. To make technology work out here means a lot of time on the road, going out bush to get feedback on old ideas and try out new ones. But the Australian desert is a big place, and for every Bruce Walker, there are many scientists whose approach to technology continues to reflect the city rather than the outback. Sure, Bruce Walker has turned the philosophy of appropriate technology into a successful Aboriginal-based enterprise, but it's the challenge that keeps him in the desert. I think the real satisfaction is that despite the glamorous technology, people need water to live, they need toilets to stay healthy and they need showers to stay healthy. And so much of our glamorous technology is aimed at, at the top end of the market, if you like. Uh, it, it ignores the, the conditions under which the majority of, of these people particularly live. And um, it's not glamorous and it's challenging and it's rewarding but it's, it's not the area that you go if you're looking for promotion. <laughs>